Hi, I'm John Orlando, and I'm going to show you how to use Articulate Rise to create a microlearning lesson for your course. Now, here's the home page of Rise, and we're going to start by simply creating a new course. Click New Course. Now, you note that you can start with a blank course, or you can use, say, templates. I'll give you an example of a template. If you click that, you're essentially given a preview course, a course that's been put together. And if you want to take a look at what it looks like, come here. And it's put together. It actually puts your name on in case you decide you're going to use it. And what you can do is simply start with a template and then start replacing all the content with the content you want. So a very simple way to run uh, Rise is just to start with a template. But we'll start with a blank course. In fact, I think it's so easy to build courses on Rise. You don't really need a template, but it's an option. So let's go back. And we're going to start with a blank course. We're going to start with, by putting in the basic information. We're going to give it a title. I'm going to call it Medical Ethics. And we're going to give her a description. This is text I already put together. Now at this point, I'm going to go up to Settings and show a couple settings you would, might want to work with. Click Settings. You can put up a logo, but probably more importantly is a cover photo. So I'm going to click Add Cover Photo. You can actually browse their photos, and they've got a lot of very attractive photos if you want to use any one of those. But this course is Medical Ethics, so I'll choose a medical-like uh, photo. So I'm going to click Add Cover Photo and Upload Photo. We'll choose that one. Now I'm also going to come down here and you notice this says Block Entrance Animations. The default is off and I'm going to turn that on. And you'll see the difference it makes. Essentially what it does is when a new block, which is basically a part of a lesson, comes in, kind of fades it in uh, as you're scrolling down. I think it's kind of a nice effect. Not a big deal, but I'm going to put it on just to show you how it works. So with that, we are going to close. Just below the title, you have an option to add a lesson title. So I'm going to make this lesson title Surrogate Decision Making. Once I've hit Return, you have Add Content. So I'm going to click Add Content. Now within a lesson, you have what are called blocks. And blocks are just pieces of content. And you'll see the different options. So a number of blocks add up to a lesson. And a number of lessons would add up to a course. Now I'll show you a few of the types of blocks you can add. So I'm going to click All Blocks. On the left-hand side comes out a navigation menu that gives me an option of adding different types of blocks. Now I'm likely to start out with the description like we did before, but we've already done that. So I'm going to actually click Quote. Now the question, what's the difference between Quote and just clicking text? Well, a Quote actually sets it up in kind of a Quote form and actually gives you a little bit of an image. I'll show you what I mean. It's kind of nice. So I'm going to click this version. I have different types of Quotes I can use. I'm going to just click this. Then we shut this left side navigation bar. You see I got an image and a quote and a name. What RISE does is it gives you a kind of sample content and you just replace it with what you want. So I have a copy that I'm going to use for my text. I'll put it in here. And I'll delete out what they gave. I'll put in the name of the author. And I will swap out the image. I'll click Edit. You notice there's an avatar here. Instead, I'll put in the avatar of the author. I'll click Edit. Replace image. Gives me a new image. And there you go. So it gives a kind of a nice look to a quote. And I kind of like introducing topics with a quote. Something thought-provoking. And we're done. Now we'll add some more blocks. This time we'll go to text, and you have a few uh, block buttons here. That just avoids having to open up the sidebar. And these are the most commonly used buttons. So I'll click text. I'll simply go to the heading spot. I'll enter my new heading, which I've already copied and pasted. 
what is the surrogate decision maker. And my text here will be to simply watch the video that I'm going to load below. Now we'll add another block. In this case, we'll make it a video because I did reference the video. Now again, notice it provides me with a kind of video starting point. But I don't want that, so I'll just edit it. I'll click Edit. I'll click Edit the Coastline MP4 here. I'll replace the video. Now depending on how long the video is you upload and your upload speed, it may take a minute or two to process the whole thing. There we go. And now I'm going to add an interaction. So I'm going to click All Blocks. Here we're going to go Interactive. And once again, it gives a variety of ways that things can be interactive. And I won't go through all of them. But you see there are different types of interactions you can use. It could be a sorting activity, a timeline, flashcards, scenarios. I'm just going to show you one type, which is a labeled graphic with hotspots. So I'll pick that. Now I'm going to replace the image. So I'm going to go edit and I'm just going to go upload image again. Once again, there's a content library that I could go through if I wanted to. And I'm just going to use an image I already found. Now you note that it has these hotspots already added. And of course I can add more. I'm going to move them. I'm going to move one to the woman and one to the man. I'm going to click close. And this is what you see. So to edit it, I'm going to go to edit here. It says item one, and that is the woman here. And I actually want to edit item two first. So I'm going to back up. Item two is the one I want to edit first. And I'm going to give it a title, Mr. Jones. I'm going to replace the text. Paste. And I can change the marker style if I want to use something different. Again, I can upload media, I can record audio, things like that. Then I'll go back and do item one. And I'll explain a little bit about this interaction. The second one is going to be called Mrs. Jones. Paste. There we have. And now we close. So the idea behind this lesson is it's a bit of a scenario of a common medical ethics issue. The students would be asked to click the hotspots and learn about the different individuals. So let's click the first one here, Mr. Jones. And the situation I described is Mr. Jones was admitted to the ER two weeks ago with chest pain. His care team believes he needs heart surgery. Though at his age, there's only a 50-50 chance that he will survive the surgery. He's also suffering from dementia. And despite repeated attempts by the care team to explain the situation, he believes it's just heartburn and refuses to consent to surgery. Now, if I want to make it into a regular lesson, I would probably expand this and do it in smaller pieces. I'm just kind of condensing things for the sake of an example. But I would probably start by explaining the patient's uh, situation. Like I might have the um, hotspot on a doctor for the first image. Students click it. They get this patient situation. Then the next image has a, maybe a hotspot on the patient when they open it up. They find out that the patient um, has dementia, doesn't believe that he has the problem that they claim he has, uh, and refuses consent to surgery. Then I would probably ask the students, what would you do if you're the doctor here? Okay. Best answer would be something like, well, I'd look to see if he has a surrogate decision maker, like a spouse uh, or a daughter or something like that. Um, but these are all kind of combined, just for the sake of example. Now, here is his wife, his hypothetical wife. So let's see what she says. They can click that. Mrs. Jones is Mr. Jones' wife of 40 years. She understands the condition, but is not comfortable approving surgery on Mr. Jones against his wishes. She's also very worried he will die in surgery and leave her with nobody to, to take care of her. 
So this is more information and if this were step by step then I might ask what do you do now? And at this point the students would likely say well we should look for somebody else who might be able to come in who's close to the family maybe a son or a daughter or something like that who can kind of talk with them a little more or something like that. That's how you can do an interaction and there are a variety of other interactions as well. Now at this point let's put in a knowledge check. So I'm going to go to all blocks I'm going to click Knowledge Check. And you see we have multiple choice, multiple response, so you can click more than one response. Fill in the blank and matching. And matching, I kind of like that as an interactive for a knowledge check. The idea is that on one side you might have labels, and on the other side you might have descriptions that match the labels. And they'll get scrambled up, and you have to say pull a box of a label and put on top of a description. I kind of like it because it forces you to kind of move your hands and sort of kinetically um, connect to what you're doing and that's been proven to uh, improve understanding. But I'll go with multiple choice. So we'll go here, there, and let's click edit. So we're going to start by entering the question. The questions what should be done. You can upload an image or a video. I'm going to give three choices. So we're going to add a choice here. So now we have three choices. And of course I can change the style and everything else. And the first choice will be the patient. The second choice will be the patient's wife. And the third will be a court appointed guardian. And you're supposed to click the correct one. Let's imagine it's the patient's wife, although in reality there, you would want a few more steps here like I mentioned, but I'm just doing this quickly. And there we have it. So let's take a preview of what this whole lesson looks like. We're going to click the preview button. So notice how we got the quote. And notice how the um, blocks, the uh, video just kind of fades in as you scroll down new block comes in and again it fades in. That's why I mentioned before about that setting, the entrance animations on. I like it. Again, you don't have to use it. One nice thing is up here, it'll show you what it looks like on a variety of devices. And this particular app, like a lot of apps, is built to work on practically any device. So this is what it looks like on desktop. If I want to see what it looks like on a tablet, that's what it'll look like on a tablet and in, in uh, portrait form. This is what it look like a tablet on landscape form. Notice I can actually look at, oh this is what it looks like if a student uses on tablet when they scroll. Mobile portrait and mobile landscape. So this is even, I can take a look and find out what's going to look like um, on a mobile phone which is kind of nice. So I can see for instance the quote would just kind of fill up the phone there which is probably what I want and everything resizes perfectly. Which is really nice. Let's go back to the overall uh, course and just take a quick look at how that's going to preview. So I'll click preview. Notice the image I uploaded will come up here. It'll start behind my name. Click start to the course. Here you have a description, course outline, and more stuff. Again, there are more functions I can add. This gives you a brief view of how really easy it is to load content and how attractive it comes out. It's, it has a very kind of modern feel to it. Um, that's what I really like about RISE. Uh, it's fairly powerful, it does a lot of things, pre pretty much most of what anyone would want to have done, and really comes out in a way that's attractive and it kind of fits what students and people in general kind of expect now or are used to seeing from a well-designed internet page, uh, web page. So give it a try. Thanks.